everyone, this is Lobster Zelda here, and right now you're going to be seeing a task that I made of Battletoads for the NES. Uh, so this task it uses two players in the game, which if you've ever played Battletoads before, you'll know that means both players can hurt each other. So that kind of makes things a little more complicated than a regular task. Uh, also, this task uses warp portals, which are spots in the game where you can skip ahead two levels. Which, in this case, it basically mostly just skips tedious auto-scrollers, like level 2 and 5 and 6, or sorry, 7, are mostly just kind of auto-scrollers that go on and on. So this has just most of the action. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm ready to start whenever you are. Alright, so we're getting started. First level, don't blink or it'll be over, because basically level starts, we kill two enemies, and then jump in the warp portal and skip to level three. So that's going to be pretty quick. Battletoads has 3D and 2D levels. Whenever you're in a 3D level, you have to kill all the enemies on screen to advance to the next screen. You know, like a usual beat-em-up. So, you know, intro cutscene for now. Uh, dropping the two toads off on this planet to save their friend who's a toad, and the Princess Angelica from the Dark Queen. So kill two enemies and go to level three. So this level, the beginning of it, is pretty straightforward, just some beat-em-up action, but there's gonna be a complicated trick coming up soon. Essentially, there's this part where you're, you know, the turbo tunnel part where you're racing on jets. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna jump from the bottom of the screen and the game's gonna think that we can jump in midair right now. We hit the jet and void out and die before activating the checkpoint, and the game starts loading objects based on what we're holding on the controller. So we hold the inputs for... Yeah, not sure what happened. Uh, let's see, let me try and rejoin. Uh, are we live again? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Okay, so where were we? So right now there's a lot of lag going on because basically I went through a checkpoint without destroying it so none of the objects deloaded. Right there they just deloaded so everything goes back to normal and we hit the warp portal. So getting back to what I was saying, in level 3 we hold the inputs that tell the game to load the object with ID7F based on what we're holding on the controller and that object signals to the game to end the level right away, which is how we skip from level 3 to 4. Uh, this level, level 6, there's not a whole lot going on, you know kicking each of the toads around, toads are punching each other. This isn't actually completely an auto-scroller, because you can manipulate the snakes to turn their heads a little faster by where you move. I think I saved about 20 frames here over the old task, but yeah, mostly an auto-scroller doing some leapfrog, or leap toad if you will, and then we jump into the exit hole. So one toad's gonna sacrifice themselves to get the other toad across, and then they hit the warp portal that's there, and that takes us to level 8. So here we hold left and right at the same time, and what that does is it shifts your Y position, which controls where you're drawn on screen and where the camera is, but doesn't change your actual coordinates, your X and Z position. So we get the camera up high enough that it activates the level checkpoint, and then we die, so the game actually loads our real coordinates at the checkpoint. That skips about the first half of the level or so right there. Uh, you'll see a lot more of left and right at the same time shenanigans in level 9 coming up. So these laser beam things, you can jump through them while they're active if you go through the edge. I'm not really sure why. Um, I guess just one of those programming oversights. Here, the attack we do on Robo Manus, here it's based on RNG, so we manipulate it so the down smash happens every time because that's the fastest. This level, there's a lot of out-of-bounds shenanigans. We start the level off holding jump and left, and that lets us fall out of bounds. That's actually not a task-only trick. If you're ever playing Battletoads and you somehow make it to level 9, you just hold jump and left to start this level, you'll fall out of bounds. It's just kind of a programming error. But anyway, one toad dies to reduce lag, and the other toad hits the checkpoint, and then both toads restart there, since uh, what the death timer for the other toad finishes ticking. So you might be able to notice that if we hold right and neutral every other frame, we can clip through these wall things here. And you might wonder, why don't we just run to the end of the level? But unfortunately, it's not that simple. 
You see, every one of these wheel sections here ends with a wall that activates a checkpoint. And if you don't activate one checkpoint, the objects in the next checkpoint won't even load at all. And if you don't activate all the checkpoints, the end of level won't load. So you can swim directly from out of bounds to the end of level in 20 seconds, but it doesn't matter because you hit the end of level and nothing happens because you didn't activate all the checkpoints. So here I did more crazy left and right at the same time shenanigans and that uh, basically allowed the camera to shift up enough that one toad could start swimming while the other toad waits to activate the checkpoint. Because you have to be standing on top of the wall when it gets destroyed for it to activate the checkpoint. Otherwise, it doesn't count. When you reach the end of the next section, the wheel just never appears, and so you're kind of just stuck. Unfortunately, I found that out the hard way when I was tasking this for the first time. I tasked this entire underwater section. I got to the very end, expecting there to be a wheel at the next section, which you'll see coming up. Uh, right here, and that wheel just wasn't there, and I lost a whole day's work. So yeah, you have to be really certain you actually activate them. So the toads are both inbounds now, it's just that because the sprites and everything are so messed up, it kind of looks like they're out of bounds, but that's just because their position on the screen is shifted. But, in about a second, now, now we're actually out of bounds. So if you pick up a toad and throw them, you can throw them through the walls directly. The walls are really just a suggestion in this game. They weren't you know, meant to be taken that seriously. So what the toad that's out of bounds activates the checkpoint, the other toad dies, and they both respawn a little bit further ahead. Saves about maybe five or six seconds. So now both toads go out of bounds again through some shenanigans. Uh, one of the toads has to go down to the bottom level because uh, if they're not, if you don't go through that point, the camera won't load objects properly, and then you can't hit the end of level. And here, one toad dies and gets pushed into the exit, which ends the level. If you hit the checkpoints while you're dead, it won't count, but you can end the level while dead, and the game counts that for some bizarre reason. So we just ended the level while dead and went to the next level. So level, speaking of bad programming, uh, level 10, you jump up while holding the other toad, and you scroll the screen down like that. And then after kicking the bomb, we punch this rat, and the game thinks he's a boss even though he's not. And so when you kill him, the level ends immediately, even though it should go on much longer. That was like one third of its total length. So this is just an auto-scroller level, and we die right away. And that's also game over. So you might be wondering why exactly did that happen? That's actually a bug in the original Battletoads for the US release. Basically, there's a timer that counts down to when player 1 and 2 can start moving, and because the playtesters were never able to make it to level two, uh, 11 in this game with two players, they never realized that player 2 doesn't have enough time to start moving before he gets rolled over. So, if it was two frames shorter, you actually could escape frame if you used frame-perfect movement, but unfortunately we can't. So that's why I timed uh, my lives so that I have exactly zero lives left at the start of this level, so I can just game over right away. And now, after a lot of explanation, I finally have a quick break. So if there's any donations, now would be a good time. Yes, we actually do have one donation from the old man for $50. No comment, but thank you very much for your donation. So yeah, this section, I kept trying to keep things close, although I technically I could just speed ahead, but you have to fight this enemy that's chasing you as a boss at the end, so it won't actually save time. Uh, but yeah, player two will come back in level 12, though. Just the only, unfortunately, he couldn't be here for this level because of, of a bug in the game itself. Actually, on the PAL version of the game, player two is able to move on this level, so you could get past this level. The issue, though, is that PAL is so much slower, it runs at like a sixth the speed of this game, so it would be about two minutes slower overall if we actually use that version, as opposed to the ten seconds we have to wait for the game over to time out. So this is a pretty typical boss fight, it's pretty easy, whether you're in a task or casually, just keep smashing him to the right, smashing to the right, and eventually it's dead. And then I hold left and right there for no reason, just to waste time, and then the level ends. Okay, so player two is back now. Uh, we're going up this tower, it's kind of like a 3D spinning circle. There's also a lot of disappearing platforms, so everything is really cycle-based here. Like, you miss a platform and you have to wait the whole, I think about two seconds for it to reappear or so. Uh, coming up, there's gonna be these four enemies that blow bubbles where you have to hang on to kind of like a pole and wait for them to stop blowing. 
the way they're programmed, they always blow bubbles for 255 non-lag frames, but they usually add a ton of lag frames, almost 200 lag frames, or maybe 100 or so on average, because of the bubbles moving all the way across the screen, and each bubble counts as an object, and so, yeah, you want them to disappear as fast as possible. It turns out, the way the bubbles move is completely based on RNG, which is also completely based on what buttons player 1 presses. So, while you're on the pole, you can press any button besides down or start, because the one pauses the game, one takes you off. And so, um, you manipulate them so the bubbles only move up left like that in a straight line. If you ever play the game casually, they normally go all across the screen, like down left, center, up left, etc. Um, for each of these four sections, I basically had to have a script running all day, testing every possible combination of input, trying to find the combination that would minimize lag as much as possible. So originally, each face was maybe like 100 frames of lag, and there was four of them. Now, each one is about five frames of lag per face. You can see they kind of move in a nice straight line like that off screen really quickly. So that's always good. So, yeah, it looks like we're get getting close to the end of this level now. So up here, we're going to do some jumps, and to hit the end of level, you just have to make the camera scroll up high enough, so we just hold left and right at the same time. And this takes us to the final boss against the Dark Queen. So one toad down smashes her, and the other toad punches her feet, which stuns her and makes her fall back down, which basically stun locks her. So they just keep repeating that combo, and she's dead, and that's time. Okay, so that takes care of that. <laughs> Oh, one thing to note I didn't get a chance to mention is that what attack you do in the game is also based on RNG, so you can just press select a random number of times before each attack to manipulate what your next attack is going to be, like whether it's a down smash or up smash, etc. Also, you can see one of the toads on the right glitches out there for a second. I'm not exactly sure why that happens, I think it's based on position. Anyway, your friend uh, Pimple the Toad and Angelica are now saved, that's what they tell you. And, uh, so Professor Bird can take you back up into the ship. And, yeah, that just about ends the task right there. I guess there isn't really much in terms of credits in this game. You just get this, uh, little message after the ship flies away. Yeah, that's the end of it.